the mighty name of Jesus. I want to read to us from the book of Psalms 141. Psalms 141. Lord, I cry unto thee, make haste unto me, give ear unto my voice when I cry unto thee. Then verse 2 says, let my prayer be set forth before thee as incense. Let my efforts in bringing prayer to you become incense before your presence. And let the lifting up of my hands as the evening sacrifice. Now listen. Like we said yesterday, if there is no sacrifice on the altar, you are joking. And a lot of people have made attempts to substitute sacrifice for faith declarations. I am a champion, you are a champion. A faith declaration cannot take the place of sacrifice. And as we journey, it will become clearer. These are things I have, I have meditated on for years. My training as a minister of the gospel is on the faith lane. So I know the vocabulary for faith teaching. I know the orientation. I know the scope of faith teaching. I know the language of faith teaching. But what we are talking about here are issues that have bedeviled even the fineness of Christians. We need a sacrifice on our altar. You may be seated. God bless you. When I was teaching yesterday, I found a great need to educate us before we continue on sacrifice on the altar. I found a great need to educate us on a matter that will equip us to be able to deal with our supervising spirit. So this is a refresher course. It is um, an appendage to what we opened up yesterday so that we can further understand the practicalities and then we'll proceed from where we stopped um, in the requirements to set up a personal altar. So I titled this little appendage as the spiritual sign language of answered prayer. When you have, when you have provoked the spirit realm with a sacrifice, you need to have some education as to how the feedback is going to come to you. If you are not equipped with the education of feedback, you'll be sitting when you are supposed to be running You'll be sleeping when you are supposed to be mounting up with wings like an eagle. Are you still with me? Okay, let us begin with uh, from the book of Luke chapter 11 from verse 9 to verse 13. Luke chapter 11 from verse 9 to verse 13. And I say unto you, ask, and it shall be given you. Seek, and ye shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. For everyone that asketh, receive it. 
and he that seeketh findeth, and to him that knocketh it shall be open. If a son shall ask bread of any of you that is a father, will he give him a stone? Or if he ask a fish, will he for a fish give him a serpent? Or if he ask an egg, will he offer him a scorpion? If ye then, being evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to them that ask him? How much more? Will your Heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to them that ask Him? I want to draw your attention to a matter quickly because according to this scripture, God's Spirit is God's answer. So I need to educate us because when we began to talk about the moment you can offer an accurate offering on the altar, you provoke the spirit realm. When the spirit realm is provoked, you are going to have an answer that is configured according to spirit language. This is where we separate the boys from the men on the matter of how to interpret the response that is coming from the spirit realm and how to deal with it with intelligence. That's how the boys are separated from the men. Now, what I'm teaching you this night is out of experience, not out of Bible knowledge. Out of a consistent work with God on this matter. It's based on the authority I've secured from a consistent work with God on this matter. Now, according to this scripture, just like I said, God's answer is God's spirit. Help me preach. Help me preach to your neighbor. Tell your neighbor, God's spirit is God's answer. And God's answer is God's spirit. If ye then being evil know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your heavenly father give the Holy Ghost to what? Them that ask him. Now, how many of you still remember the book of the Acts of the Apostles? The instruction that Jesus gave his disciples in the book of Luke, chapter 24, verse 49, to proceed to Jerusalem and tarry there in prayer. So the theologians helped us with it the historical perspective and they were able to diagnose that the prayer adventure was for 10 days all right and the response to that prayer initiative was the day of pentecost it means that god's answer is god's spirit and god's spirit is god's answer and what i mean by this is when you trouble the spirit realm in attempting to move the hand of God with a sacrifice, the answer that you are going to get is a spirit-based answer. Now, what I want to teach today is how to interpret, how to recognize that answer. Because the answer is not coming in form of a human-based answer answer but a spirit based response Isaiah chapter 32 are you still there okay 
Isaiah chapter 32, turn your Bible. Still trying to build perspective. Beginning from verse number 9, Isaiah 32. Rise up, you women that are at ease. Hear my voice, ye careless daughters. Give ear unto my speech. Many days and many years shall ye be troubled, ye careless women. For the vintage shall fail, the gathering shall not come. Tremble, ye women that ease, be troubled, ye careless ones, strip you and make you bare, and give stark cloth upon your loins. They shall lament for the teeth, for the pleasant fields, for the fruitful vine. Upon the land of my people shall come up thorns and briars, yea, upon all the houses of joy in the joyous city, because the palaces shall be forsaken, the multitude of the city shall be left, the forts and towers shall be for shall be for dens forever, a joy of wild asses, a pasture of flocks. Verse 15 is my scripture of interest. It says, until the Spirit be poured upon us from on high. God's answer is God's Spirit. He said the situation in the land is going to continue. The lamentation will prevail. The tears and the mourning will be the order of the day. And for your information, what the Bible is trying to describe here is the obituary of a city. The obituary of a nation. And if you see the description of this obituary, you will know that Nigeria is in a state of obituary. Just take your time and uh, look at the descriptions. And if you please, you can even begin from verse number one. And you see all the items that make for the obituary of a people, the obituary of a civilization, the obituary of a nation is what is carefully itemized in that place that portion of scripture. And the Bible says that these things will continue until what? The Spirit is poured upon us from on high. Until God gives the answer of His Spirit. When He gives the answer of His Spirit and His Spirit is poured upon us from on high, the wilderness shall be what? A fruitful field, and the fruitful field shall be counted for a forest. It means that the potential of that wilderness will be adequately realized. He's not saying until rain falls. Saying until, oh my, the spirit is poured upon us until God's answer you know, I said that God's spirit is God's answer. And God's answer is God's spirit. So you are seeing here in the book of Isaiah chapter 32, how that God is giving an answer of his spirit as a release. And then the wilderness becomes fruitful. And then the fruitful field becomes a forest. So the obituary ceases. The moment the answer of the Spirit comes into the community. Oh my. I just wanted you to see this trend that it is very biblical. Before I start my matter, just trying to provide perspective. And I stumbled on this insight today. I was trying to explain things. Then I stumbled on it, it became clear. That God's spirit is God's answer. And God's answer is 
is there. All right, let me show you some symptoms quickly before I start the real lecture, because most of you are still looking up. It means you don't understand what I'm trying to explain. So I need to situate it within a, a sociological context to open our eyes to the practicality, how practical the Bible is. In, uh, so jump with me to the book of Acts chapter 2. Acts chapter 2. If you read Acts chapter 2, verse 42, you are going to see the fourfold agenda of the apostolic community. This fourfold agenda is what we call the apostolic culture. Whenever you come into the apostolic community, these are the things that fellowship in that community is built around. These four points here. And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrines, not just normal talking. There is a spiritual menu called the apostles' doctrine, and that was the basis of their philosophy in the apostolic community. They continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine, they continued steadfastly in fellowship, they continued steadfastly in the breaking of bread, they continue steadfastly in prayer. So these are the four pillars of apostolic culture. We've not had time to look into these pillars. Um, our civilization as a people in this ministry is built around these pillars. Because I told you that what we are running as a ministry is a prototype, they, in, in my own understanding, is the closest pro prototype to the arrangement that is available in the book of Acts of the Apostles. It's a textbook. Hallelujah. All right, so uh, the, the apostolic culture is in this, is sustained in these four items mentioned in this scripture. You will notice that one of the items here mentioned is prayers. And uh, how did they proceed with these four items of the apostolic culture? It was steadfastly. That means if you come into their company, they will afflict you with prayer until if you survive it, then prayer will become your lifestyle. If you come into their company, they will afflict you with the apostles' doctrine until your philosophy changes. If you come into their company, that they will afflict you with something they call love feast. Informal church settings. Are you there? Very, very informal church settings so that the, it's not only informal meetings like this where we are strapped with microphones that we get to meet each other. So informal settings. Sometimes... God moves more intensely in informal settings than informal settings. So they had that arrangement uh, where they bro broke bread. And, and a lot is said about that informal settings and the potential that it holds amidst the people of God um, who are called his ecclesia upon the face of the earth. Hallelujah. Now, but you notice that one of the items there is prayer. So there was this culture of prayer that was sustained in the company. Now, in view of the above, I want to show you a feedback. Because anytime you are bringing a sacrifice, you must have discovered that prayer is not something you can sustain with natural energy. You will need supernatural energy to continue in prayer. You can come in here and maybe you shout, shout, shout. Before you are done, you would have lost your voice. If you are doing it in the flesh. We have seen many people like that, that they just felt, okay, we are doing this thing with human energy. I saw one shouting the other day and he was quiet after 30 minutes and was very quiet until the service came. <laughs> 
and, and it, is, it is with spiritual <laughs> energy that we prosecute prayer. And uh, especially when we are going on a 40-day experiment like this, uh, when you start getting to 20-something day, all the natural energy that you are using for the process will die out. That's when Satan will tell you, no go there again. <laughs> But it's when the flesh has, is completely worn out, that's when your spirit begins to open up. That's the thing about the spirit. The spirit likes those conditions when the flesh is tired. <laughs> when the flesh is worn out, that's when your spirit begins to rejoice because there is this seamless, unbroken access that your spirit begins to secure in the presence of God when your flesh is no longer noisy. The entire process is propelled by the energy that is factored in your spirit man. Now, if we read subsequent verses, you are going to see the feedback that came on the account of their tireless prayers. Right? Can we go on? And fear came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were done by the apostles. If you read the list, you are going to see that the list of feedbacks are supernatural things that began to find expression in the apostolic community. You will now realize that the mechanical energy that was responsible for driving the activities of the apostolic community was their commitment to prayer. As long as that mechanical energy was, was factored in, the supernatural outcomes of that impute is what we are reading from verse 43. It says, one fear, a strange fear, came upon every soul. And the fear we are talking about here is not a fear of torment, but it's a fear of reverence. When everyone begins to come into the community, it's a physical place, but the moment you step in there, this fear grips you. You begin to see people conducting themselves with such levels of comportment. You wonder what is regulating them. There's a fear that came upon every soul. The second feedback that we see here is that many signs and wonders were done by the apostles. It means that in that company, the supernatural became commonplace. People that were afflicted, they met with their healing. Things that were hidden were brought forth to light. There was a supernatural dimension that was becoming commonplace in their midst. It was because of the mechanical energy that was ongoing at every point in time. Are you with me? Do you realize that if we decide to increase our prayer investments as a company will have more miracles. How many of you still remember the 91, day, the 91 days we did before Festival of Glory? As you will remember it. Don't say you remember it. If you made at least one day in that 91 day prayer, it is your, your feedback I want, not people that were only seeing it on the board. Yeah, so let's go again. The people that remember it because they were on the field themselves. Now, we did 91 nights, night vigil for 91 nights. It translated to a concentration of the presence of God in a, a, high, a, high, a high concentration. And all kinds of things. In fact, it is when we finished the meeting that we now began to hear the real testimonies that took place on the field. So there was an allocation of supernatural possibility that became their collective experience just because that mechanical energy of prayer. Are you there? Okay. Next verse. And all that believed were together and had all things in common. All the fault lines of tribal fault lines and Igede and and from 
and massive. <laughs> Guys. <laughs> oh, my God. All those fault lines were no longer strong enough to be an object of division. This, there was this oneness. That's how unity is born. It's just like you cannot, you cannot produce the fruit of the Spirit without the Spirit. You cannot produce unity of the Spirit without the Spirit. Whenever you see the unity of the Spirit, it's a product of the Spirit of God. When the government of the Holy Ghost is factored among a people, you will begin to see a kind of harmony that only exists in the Godhead as part of their social experience. And it will interest you to know, for those of you that study sociology, I'd like you to take your notes, your sociology notes, and compare and contrast it with what you will find in the book of Acts of the Apostles, chapter 2. You will be amazed that the order of things that you will find in this place is not, is not obtainable among humankind. Did the order of things. The reading has not finished. What you, will fi what you are going to find in this reading is only possible when the Holy Spirit descends as feedback. And all that believed were together and had all things in common and sold their possessions and goods and parted them to all men as every man had need. This is the, the cure for poverty. In your sociology textbook, there is no cure for poverty. This one, this system that was beginning to evolve, no one had need because the guys that had were moved by God and what did they do? They parted their possessions. And then the analysis of their corporate situation eventually was that there was none in their midst that had me. I remember when we, we had this little prayer group those days when we were still in the university. And at least I can see one person in this congregation that used to be part of that prayer group. When we resumed from holidays and uh, we start attending the prayer meetings. You will see the new shirts that people brought from home. Sky blue shirt. Golden watch. And by the time we are two months into the semester, you will see that shirt on another brother. The watch has moved. The sandals have moved. Because when the Holy Spirit is in charge, he has a distribution principle that he implements among the people. If you stay long enough, you might discover that that's your best garment, the best one. The one that when you wear, you, you can't even fold, your, your hands will be like this. <laughs> the Holy Spirit knows how to request the distribution of such items. That's how someone bought a jeep. It was one of a kind in the city of Abuja. Put it in the, the garage. So when he prays in tongues in the night, he will feel like going to take a look at the vehicle. So when he went to take a look at the vehicle the third time, the Holy Spirit said, sew it. <laughs> There is a distribution system in the Holy Ghost. May the Lord give you understanding. Amen. As he caught glimpse of the vehicle, the third time, he, the voice was loud. Oh, sorry. It was no longer a possession, it was an idol. So he had to go so that his soul can be relieved of the body. There are things you have like that. In order for the Holy Spirit to help you out, he will, he will initiate that is distribution policy. So it. I didn't know the Lord was training us so that our confidence would not be in the possessions that we had. I had this 
sky blue shirt. Jesus Christ, you have no idea of that shirt. It was a bed shirt. In fact, we were in prayer when we were high in spirit. You know, that level that you cannot deny that he's the one talking. High in spirit. He showed me the person to give you. <laughs> Hallelujah. Now, do you, are you still with me? Yes, sir. All right, so if you are growing in God, one of the things that we are going to see in your life is called generosity. You know, the Bible says, for God so loved the world. That's, so he gave. His nature of generosity is going to be factored in your life. You can actually measure how much of godliness you have attained by your generosity. You, you are expecting people to give you. It has not occurred to you that you are still better off than someone else. Um, can, I would like you to help me quickly. Are you there? Please help me ask the person sitting by your side. Did you eat yesterday? Ask, ask the person. So what's the response? The person asked. Now let me give you an idea. If you, please help me preach now, help me preach. If you have enough to eat, it means you have something to give. Just to help that one that says that, well, the reason why I'm not giving is because I have nothing. If you ate yesterday, it means you have something to give. There's a very poor church, I don't know, I think in Thailand, exceptionally poor, and they stumbled on this revelation that if they had something to eat, it means they had something to give, and all of them were farmers, so they began to give rice, small portions of rice. It is the rice that they gather and sell that the church uses for church administration. And even though they were exceptionally poor people, because they had what to eat, they had what to give. And the mission of the Lord Jesus prospered in those lands through the effort of farmers because they realized that if you have as much as what to eat, then you have something to give. Well, I think we need to look for Do you know that video? Please look for it. it that changed my giving life completely. It changed my entire life of giving completely. You will not have to give if you don't give. If you stop giving, you will stop having. You stop getting. That which you want for somebody, you want for yourself, give it to somebody first. I remember I was looking for a pastor that would teach me the word of God. God told me that you are going to be that pastor to other people. You will never have the one that will teach you the way you want. But you can become that one to other people. Now, can you stop thinking of yourself? It means that if I'm going to be that one, the Holy Ghost will need to make provision, make allocation for grace. It is more blessed to give than to receive. When the Holy Spirit came down in their company, there was this evidence of selflessness that had invaded their heart. And the Bible says what? And all that believed were together and had all things in common and sold their possessions and goods and parted them to all men as every man had need. I will still come to this scripture to show us when we talk about the strategies of Christianity in the end time. I need to still come to this scripture and do it more extensively so that you can see that it is you and me that is the limitation of the gospel at this point in time. Because there is an aspect of the dealing of the Holy Spirit that is not yet perfected in us. So we don't have capacity to exercise faith. Because your giving is an illustration of your capacity to exercise faith. Abraham's testimony for not minding that God requested that he should kill his son 
was that he knew that God had the ability to raise him up from the dead. And that was his own logic, the logic that was behind his obedience. So it was easy for him to present the son to kill because he knew the ability of God. You see, this understanding, meanwhile, are you there? In the book of Hebrews chapter 11, the Bible says, by faith we understand. It means faith ushers us into, into higher levels of spiritual logic. That is what makes it easy for us to obey God in situations that would have been obviously impossible otherwise. If God wants to help your spiritual life, he gives you an understanding, a custom-made understanding. And that understanding becomes the basis upon which you can access grace to do things that normal people will not do because they don't have the same kind of understanding that you have. Anytime you see someone doing business and he's prospering when others are failing, fundamentally what he has is an understanding. You see someone um, uh, modeling his marital experience as if they were made from heaven. The same circumstances that will be the reason for breakups in other cases. It's the same circumstances that is binding them more together. When you find that, don't try to ask them what are the buttons to press. There is an understanding that they have that makes it possible. Are you still with me? Or you are not? You are not following me. Are you there? Yes, understand. So that's what the Holy Spirit does to you if He wants you to operate on higher levels of His grace. He gives you an understanding. Just like he gave me an understanding today, he said, God's answer is what? Is God's spirit. And God's spirit is God's answer. I've not finished meditating on it. When I finish, I will come back. And I will show you what that simple statement has created in my spirit. Rooms, more rooms, more capacity. There was no need in their company. This, these are feedbacks. Spirit feedbacks because they were in a prayer community. They had the Holy Ghost give them feedbacks, and we see it evidently manifested in their lives. Are you there? And they continued daily with one accord in the temple, the breaking of bread from house to house. They'd eat their meat with gladness and singleness of heart, praising God and having favor with all the people and the Lord added to the church daily such as should be saved. Now if you check that statement, such as should be saved, it suggests to me that there were some people that the Holy Ghost was convicting because of the lifestyle of the people of God. So the evangelism that, that the apostolic community was doing was through their lifestyle. And the people began to wonder, how can human beings live like this? And when the Holy Spirit draws their attention to this impossible spirit-filled community, the example of their life, the example of, of their living, people were convicted. And people came to join themselves in their midst, such people that were willing to turn over their hearts to Jesus Christ. So there, were, there was a permanent system, a permanent system of conversions that was going on. Are you there? Yes, sir. There was a permanent system of salvation experiences that was going on in the community. There was a permanent system of addition. Because at this point, the, it was an arithmetic pro progression, so it was additions. They continued, and when they continued, I will show you where it became multiplications. So as long as they were fellowshipping, People were coming to join their ranks. People were coming to give their lives to Christ. And these people were pre-convinced by the Holy Ghost using the apparatus of the life of these guys under God as a marketing strategy. Did you get that? I just tried to situate that my understanding that I got today while I was praying and studying that God's spirit is God's answer, and God's answer is God's spirit. So let's start the real lecture. 
Are you there? Come with me to First Kings. First Kings chapter 19, beginning from verse 9 to verse 13. I felt a need for us to do this study because when I began to talk about sacrifice, I knew that there were several gaps uh, in my presentation. And if we are going to have a very practical outlook of the subject matter that we are dealing with, we will need to be equipped with some other supportive insights that will help us appreciate the process, the practice, and the procedures, and also the protocols of response that God is going to adopt. So I want to therefore invite us to the book of First Kings. Are you there? First Kings chapter 19. And I will commence a reading from verse number 9. And he came up thither unto a cave and lodged there. And behold, the word of the Lord came to him, and he said unto him, What doest thou here, Elijah? And he said, I have been very zealous for the Lord God of hosts, for the children of Israel have forsaken thy covenant, thrown thine altars, thrown down thy altars, and have slain thy prophets with the sword. And I, even I only, am left, and they seek my life to take it away. And he said, Go forth and stand upon the mount before the Lord. And behold, the Lord passed by with a great strong wind. Underline wind. The first method of spirit-based answers is what we call the wind, the wind answer. Now, you know, are you there? The wind answer. And I know that it might sound strange to us, so I decided to equip myself with a few scriptures to uh, present it to us as it is found in the Holy Book before we begin to discuss the practicalities. It was the Lord. Are you there? How did he manifest? He passed by and a great strong wind rent the mountains and break in pieces the rocks before the Lord. Can you see that when that wind came, what did it do? Oh my, you are not following me. It broke the rocks. It removed the obstacles. So there are times, but obviously, in this particular scripture, the response that Elijah needed was not an opposition-breaking response. Even though the opposition-breaking response came from God, God can answer like that. Are you there? But that was not what he needed. So, but in this presentation, we will see the way the feedback system of a spirit being, he can answer by wind. Come with me to the book of Acts of the Apostles, chapter 2. I will read from verse number 1. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place, and suddenly there came a sound from heaven as what? Can you still remember in the book of Ezekiel chapter 37 where the wind of God was released on the valley of dry bones and bone came together, bone to his bone. It was an answer, it was a spirit response, but it was like wind. This wild wind of the spirit is something I've experienced many times over. 
God showed me a dream that I, I've forgotten. The, the dream he showed me is for the practical aspect of this lecture. But I'm beginning to forget that my dream. He gave me a dream yesterday night to, to do a, a five minutes practical. <laughs> okay. So there, there is a wind answer. The wind answer is the answer that removes obstacles. It can break rocks. So what are you praying about? Does it require that obstacles be moved? Then the spirit response in that regard is going to be a wind answer. In fact, for people that are intelligent spiritually, some of the prophets you find in the Bible, they will, even in their request, they will recommend the kind of answer that they, are, they require to discomfit the attempts of the enemy in that peculiar situation. So God can answer by wind. And that answer is to take away what? The obstacles. Once upon a time when we were still in secular service, we were, this strange man was imposed upon us as, as our manager. Terrible creature. Hallelujah. The once peaceful place became a den of suspicion. Everybody was suspecting the other person because the the turbulence have been brought into the ecosystem. The moment you see him, he will threaten you that when it's time to assess you, I, I will, I will do. <laughs> Everyone was on edge. It was a safe haven previously, but it was, it was turned into chaos because a strange creature came and missed us. Hallelujah. So I went to pray about this man. The first question is, is this man, is he in your agenda? Because if the man has a stake in the agenda of God, my prayers may not, I may not find sufficient favor to displace him. Because it's the will of God that has put him there. And when I found out that he is not a, a, a player in God's agenda, ah, I pressed further. I said, is there... We plead that he be displaced. I did that prayer for seven days. Then I saw the east wind in, in the spirit. I saw it. He came and moved him out of that seat. Hallelujah. So I went to work. And some of my colleagues that are cousins, you, the sons of the bond woman, they are our cousins. So they came to explain to me the ordeal they suffered the previous day, how that the man put them on the spot, and they left the office by 1 a.m. I announced the door, said the law. You know, those days, when I was still in public service, I was so proud of my God. <laughs> so proud, so proud of my God. So I said, Thus said the Lord, I beheld in the spirit a wind, an east wind from heaven, and he took this man you are complaining about from his seat. And these words came to pass in seven days. Now, you know, I said I'm excited about my God. I was so excited about my God, especially when I have his word. I don't hide it. I come into the community of people and say, Thus said the Lord. In so much that one of our cousins wanted to get married, he brought the lady for scanning to see if there were demons in her. <laughs> the Lord can answer by wind. If there's an obstacle, and this is not the only time the wind came to displace people in, in the line of duty in order to pave way for the purposes of God. I've seen displacements of all sorts. Oh my God, may the Lord will open your eyes. Amen. All kinds of displacements. 
If there are people in the office that are standing in your way and they want to make life miserable for you, I have shown you the answer. This wind, you can get a wind answer faster than the other one. This one is available. It comes quickly. In two days, you can muster the east wind. Yes, in two days, you can muster the east wind. And before this week is over, how many of you have people in the office that are just oppressing your life? We will test it. We will test this wind on, on your situation. <laughs> the people I'm talking about, the people that were displaced are very powerful Nigerian men. Very powerful. From all standards, they are exceptionally powerful. And this wind, when he took them off those seats of glory, where he dumped them, they, even their memory was forgotten in that place. The prophet was asked to come out of the cave and to stand upon the mountain. And the first move that took place was a wind dancer. Are you there? And after the wind and earthquake, so the Lord, a spirit being can answer by earthquake. The earthquake is what we call the sound of intervention. The sound of intervention. Who has it there in the book of Acts of the Apostle, chapter 16? Acts 16, verse 25. After the wind answer, there was an earthquake answer. Sometimes the foundation of many things need to be shaken. Just like the foundation of many families need to be shaken before this week comes to an end. Yeah. So there are custom-made answers that are foundation, foundation specific. We can secure wind answers if there are obstacles standing in the way the wind can break the rocks. Sometimes the issues we are dealing with are fasting into foundations. And the Bible says that if the righteous, if the foundation be destroyed, what can the righteous do? Oh, if an intelligent righteous man, he can invoke such responses, such answers from God that can rattle foundations. Acts chapter 16 Okay, let us, let us start. Can we start from a place where it will be easy to flow with um, the progression of revelation? Well, can we start from... Okay, I think verse 16 is going to be the best place to start so that we can capture the entire story. And it came to pass... As we went to prayer, a certain damsel possessed with a spirit of divination met us, which brought her masters much gain by soothsaying. The same followed Paul and us and cried, saying, These are the servants of the Most High God, which show unto us the way of salvation. And this did she many days, but Paul, being grieved, turned and said, Unto the Spirit, I command thee in the name of Jesus Christ, come out of her. And he came out of her the same hour. And when her master saw that the hope of their gains was gone, they caught Paul and Silas and drew them into the marketplace unto the rulers, and brought them to the magistrate, saying, These men, being Jews, do exceedingly trouble our city and teach customs which are not lawful for us to receive, neither to observe, being Romans. And the multitude rose up together against them, and the magistrate rent off their clothes and commanded to beat them. And when they had laid many stripes upon them, they cast them into prison, ch charging the jailer to keep them safely, who, having received such charge, thrust them into the inner prison and made their feet fast in the stocks. 
And at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises unto God, and the prisoners heard them, and suddenly there was a great earthquake. What is the specialty of the earthquake? Oh, you are, okay, you are fasting. I, I, will, I will forgive because you are in a fasting mode. And what happened? There was a great earthquake so that the foundations of the prison were shaken. And immediately all the doors were opened and everyone's bands were loose. There, are you there? So the earthquake answer can shake foundations. The earthquake answer can open doors. The earthquake answer can release chains. Igaboko. Igakora Kakola. It seems somebody needs an earthquake answer. <laughs> <laughs> so an answer can come in form of an earthquake. Are you there? Okay. Number three. An answer can come in form of fire. You still remember? After the wind, then there was what? Earthquake, then there was now fire. Have you heard Elijah say before that the Lord, the God that answered by fire, let him be God. And answer can come in form of fire. Sometimes what you need is fire. Especially if they are consumables. Because fire is dispatched to consume. If they are consumables, fire, 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 fire is dispatched, is dispatched. If there are things that need to be consumed, things that need to be burnt off. Sometimes when we are doing deliverance and it's becoming difficult, hi, fire. You just release it. When you release it, the demons will be tormented. And then when you say, should we leave you? They will now recommend that. Cast us out. But they will recommend themselves. We need leave of this environment. <laughs> because a spirit can answer. How? By fire. Well, let's do the common one. Acts of the Apostles chapter 2 from verse 1 to 3. Acts of the Apostles chapter 2 from verse 1 to 3. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind. And it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as of fire. And it sat on each and every one of them. The 10 day prayer investment that they brought into the heavenlies was responded to by cloven tongues of fire. So God can answer by fire. If you do a proper examination of the circumstance of the situation that bedevils you, you will have an idea of the kind of answer you need. Your prayers are more effective when you are demanding that kind of answer. Because Elijah was very specific in his request. Elijah did not open up possibilities of answers. There was a type of answer he requested for the circumstance on ground. It was the fire answer. So a spirit being can respond by fire. But don't forget the golden rule. God answers the spirit. God answers by what? God's answer is God's spirit. And God's spirit is God's answer. 
But the manifestation of God's spirit in answers can take on different shades and different colors. Don't say, I like the fire answer more. No, that may not be what you need for your circumstance. If the issue has to do with foundational issues, things fastened into genealogies, fastened into generations, you might need an earthquake so that the things that are hid can be brought forth to light. And as you do spiritual exercises, like the one we are doing now, you need to take note of the feedback processes. There are feedback processes that we have. And I think that's the lecture for tomorrow, the feedback processes. All right? That's when you, it will come to your understanding, are you there, that when the spirit realm is provoked, God wants to speak. And that's the last item here in my note. God wants to speak, all right? So because he, he came first like um, wind, then he came again like what? Earthquake? Then he came again like what? Fire? Then there's the aspect of the voice. Now, the aspect of the voice, even though I'm going to introduce it tonight, but the real lecture on the voice aspect is going to be tomorrow. Because that's how you receive wisdom. Sometimes, sometimes... Um, in spiritual processes, what you need is guidance and wisdom. And that cannot come as an earthquake. That will be captured in a voice. So we'll talk about that briefly, but tomorrow I'm going to show us th those channels. The channels that become open up when the Holy Ghost is trying to give you wisdom. Alright? You still remember that song we normally sing? Channels of my spirit. Open up. Second Chronicles chapter 7, from verse number 1. Second Chronicles chapter 7, from verse number 1. And now when Solomon had made an end of praying, what did he do? He prayed. All right? And the fire came down from heaven. So it means that the Spirit of God responded to Solomon in what way? By fire. And the fire came down from heaven and consumed the burnt offering and the sacrifice. And the glory of the Lord filled the house. And the priest could not enter into the house of the Lord because the glory of the Lord had filled the Lord's house. And when all the children of Israel saw how the fire came down and the glory of the Lord was upon the house, they bowed themselves with their faces to the ground upon the pavement and worshipped and praised the Lord, saying, For he is good, and his mercies endure it forever. It was a national prayer day, the day of the inauguration of the temple of God that was built in all majesty, and Solomon was moved in the spirit and he began to make supplication and the scope of his prayer was national. And the proof that God had heard and that God had responded was a sign of fire. So when the spirit of God decides to move in some instances, he answers by is that clear? Okay, so, I, uh, so no need to go into other scriptures, especially the Elijah challenge, and how, oh my God, that's a very powerful scripture. If I read it, it energizes me so much. That's the, the God that answers by fire. All right, so finally, because I want us to practice it, ah, I think we're going to leave this voice for tomorrow. The voice is a big matter. Sometimes God doesn't want to destroy. What he wants to do is to give you direction. But in the warfare that you are fighting, 
you will need to do some specific things that will legitimize him, legitimize his intervention. So he gives you guidance so that when you operate according to that guidance, he will have legitimacy to move into the matter. So he needs to smuggle an intelligence to you. So part of the way in which answers are shaped in some cases is in form of intelligence, is a form of wisdom, is in form of guidance. In fact, the proof that God really wants to advance your case is that he gives you wisdom. He gives you guidance. And if you don't have guidance yet, don't assume. Don't take off like a tornado because you will come back weeping. If God is involved, the Lord gives you guidance. Are you there? Once upon a time, so many opportunities opened to me in ministry. So many, so many opportunities. This place had opened, that place had opened. Um, and I don't want to go into details. So many opportunities. Sometimes the thing that will derail you is not a bad thing. It's a, it's a good thing. It's a good thing. So many opportunities. The kind of opportunities I, I'm talking about are opportunity, big ones. But I, be, I discovered that an open door is not necessarily a sign from God. When I went into the inner chamber, saw the spirit to investigate, God told me that he was not responsible for those doors that opened. How will massive, I think they, what, <laughs> what we preach these days about breakthrough. So the, the, the name of our God is breakthrough. That's the name of our God. When you see an open door, it, this is God. I found out that it's not, that's not the case every time. As much as we trust God for open doors, eh, we are not bound up in reproach. So we trust God for open doors. We trust God for opportunities to open to us. I can tell you that even though a door opens, it is wise for you to check if it's God is behind it. So we, that was the first time I got on cable, cable television. We were still in the other place that time. We got a slot on uh, a very thriving cable television, and the coverage was quite, quite, the spread was good. So we, we could pay for that slot, and we paid for it, smuggled our materials there. And after... One month of viewership, we started getting phone calls, opportunities to preach the gospel on big platforms across Africa. I think the first year we started airing, I got 12 invitations, 12 major invitations, 12 major invitations. And this was, this was about 2012. I got 12 major invitations in 2011, 2012. So I went to God and said, I can see that you're opening doors for me. God said, I'm not aware of doors. When you enter a door that God has not opened, you have heard the story of people that entered into inter uh, international ministry and then got glued to adultery. Let me tell you how it starts. You enter a door that God did not open. The outcome of that adventure will be a mark from the kingdom of darkness because there's no grace to cover you on that tree. If you know the power of grace, the energy of grace, that's the only antidote that God has made available for us to live above sin. So if grace doesn't cover you on a mission, so many things. You may not even come back. And if you do, you are likely to come back fractured. There's a great minister of the gospel that influenced my life. A great minister of the gospel. 
It was when we started visiting a certain nation. And the name of the nation is withheld. For some of you will now say, you calculate like this. I know how you think. We started visiting some nations. A certain nation, we now saw that he has children there. It was not the Lord that opened the door for him. Satan too opens doors. Those doors will eventually become prison houses for people that cannot discern. And that is the reason why God answers also in still small voices to administer wisdom and guidance. So that when you are asked who sent you, you can provide a quick answer. Who sent you? We started to tour some nations. And then I now realized, okay, this man used to come here. Hey, 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 hey. He had children. Those were people that felt that promotion in ministry was the, the, the opportunity to preach in other nations. When I saw those signs, I remained in Makodi. I remained in Makodi until Jehovah Sabaoth now said, it is time for you to go to the nations and my spirit will go with you. Don't think preaching in another nation is, a, is, is promotion. You can come back broke. You can even be arrested. It's when we started traveling uh, that I now saw, I saw some of our brothers that were arrested at the airport. <laughs> I saw people that were desperate to say on my spiritual CV, I was in Angola. I came to Congo. Those, some of those trips are not good trips. They arrested some of them. They were jailed. It's bribed. They bribed their way out of jail. And that's why the Lord will need to come to you as a still small voice. For some of you, you will not sense the thunder. For some of you, he will not come as earthquake. And for some others also, he will not manifest as fire. He will manifest to you as a still small voice. In the privacy of my room, in the privacy of my room, the great one, he, you know he sings songs to me. Ask my wife sometimes, you see me dancing. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Hi, the life in the spirit. Oh, my God. The people that built our house, they put a television in our bedroom, which we have not used. It's a waste of resources. Because I have my own custom-made entertainment. Oh, <laughs> The Holy Spirit is the first minstrel, the first musician. Because in my heart, he plays instruments and sings at the same time. The still small voice will admonish you. Are you there? He will whisper. And in that whisper, is captured 10 years in the future to come. Ay. Hallelujah. There is a scripture that is coming to my spirit now. It's not on my script. That scripture that says, you will hear a voice behind you say. What, what, what scripture is that? See, now you are not talking. Isaiah chapter, chapter 30, verse 21. Okay, let's begin from verse 20. 20, 20. Ah. Are you sure this is the scripture? Okay, go to 21. Let's see. And thy ears shall hear a word behind thee saying, This is the way. Walk ye in it. That's the voice of guidance. The voice of wisdom. 
among so many assortment of possibilities, it points you to where the will of God is. This is the way. Hallelujah. Can we pray in a moment? For some of you, you need an earthquake quickly. You can ask him for, <laughs> for an earthquake. <laughs> for some of you, you need fire, an intervention of fire. You can ask him for fire. That the God that answers by fire might come into your space, might settle the situation by administering a flame. Oh my, he's a God of answers. It's a God of answers. The Spirit of God is God's answer. It's God's answer. It's God's answer. It's God's answer. Haven't evaluated the situation. You can recommend the kind of intervention that you are trusting God for. You can recommend the kind of intervention just in case an earthquake something that has to do with foundations genealogies even before you were born it was already twisted so that your life will be encumbered you can ask for a tremor you can ask for an earthquake so that the things concealed can be brought forth to light the things hidden can be made manifest somebody call upon his name right now call upon his name call upon his name call upon his name Call upon his name. Oh, oh, oh. He can decide to respond by kindling a fire. He can decide to respond by bringing a flame. Oh, Saido More. Shikabonda ala bruske sasila neki. Eson de lebros. Zamalan to Korea. Escopamila. Eskilo bronde, eskababo sakadula, amai kan se takonde nekeria, isko bramena, isa sela iko babala, rabala basonde, rabala basakadola, ibraskante ko rabaski do kobre ele. Don't move until you hear that voice, and you will hear a voice behind you say, "Koria bile." Sekosando, raskatana baboka bambela, ika bayatos entore, enso sana kinde, embra baboko satia, rakambela sobri, arada no konsame, askedo ma sika bresko balando, oria baba baba sika, raska balando, oro kosi, elamisa, elabrandeli, yalala la baboko sala, yalala la 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 la. Somebody needs to call down the thunder, the thunder, the thunder. Eliasi Kobama, La Laisa, La Brahada Babo Semante, Shepena Kata Babo Kodama, Raseka Bonda, Barata Babo Samir, Shebali Kabamelu, Brahma Baladan, Eska Babo Dokoy, Eska Babanda Maboya, Eska Babonda Maboya, Eska Babonda Maboya, Rajada Masika Bandebo Konda Basa. Rakaba Baba Suka Babaya Esila and Tem Shambaro Korea Baba Siko Baba Santa Babore Baba Bakuda Basa Esta Babona Esia Branda Babona Esta Bri Alato Sama Alata Branda Babore Esia Brana 
Messia Prakatala, El Amor Sape, El Abrana Babore, Sama Katapataya, El Abama Babosala, Abrakama Santa Babore, Ebrana Babasaya, Ebrana Babona, Rakaba Sopre, Aleto Sando, Aleto Pompre da Basande, Alamosa Mandala Babore, Semina Kane. A fresco da branda pavoria, Alisa de, Alisa de, a caianto bona, semina cania, a fresco pavanto, a barato seco, brega da pavata. E a luz, e papel, branda bolsa, branda pavata pavosoto, branda pavata saia, semina cana, branda pavosaia, acabou sempre. La brana basa katana babona ayamos ayamos ya la 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 babasaka la 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 babosokola aya la babasaka babona aya kaposa te ya la 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 Rasata babo no kovele, ebria babo kabasada, rada babo no kovrega de basada, rada babo na basi ebria babo kabasada. Ya la 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 babo say, rada basada, ela basada, rasata babo ra, akabala akabala babo la, ita bala basada baba la 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 la. Ya la 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 babo say. Rada babo la makanda, ala la 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 babose. Ega masanda brada muda, brada ila ose kande. Esta baba moto kanda la, ela kasa na brada babo la kanda. Rada masanda, ebria la babo na kasa. Madia brusa bela, brada babo la kanda. Rada masanda brada babo le, ega mada 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 mada. Se prega de la boa baba ha, ala babo la. Oh, <laughs> Ila bosa wa brada bosi pe brada tala mabona ya kape ya kaba la kote a presta kota a kaba bosa pe ila bosa pe haya. 